I see four Gospels. And when I first started reading the Bible, I was about 11 or 12 years old. I wasn't born again, but I like to read the Bible. And I thought, why are there four Gospels? Why don't they just put it in one? Because it seems like the Gospels say a lot of the same things. But then as you read the Gospels, you see that three of them kind of see things together. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic Gospels because they see together. But then John is totally different because a lot of the things that happened to Jesus, Matthew tells, Mark tells, Luke tells, but John just kind of takes off and goes another direction. And when you are reading the New Testament, I always say it breaks into four sections. And so this is easy for you to remember and you have this wonderful Bible school. So I'm just reviewing, but maybe you're new here tonight. This will be cool for you, okay? Everybody say cool. cool. Now, New Testament divides into four segments. It has the Gospels. So let's have these three sections say Gospels. gospels. And then it has history. history. And that's the book of Acts. Then it has the epistles. The epistles. These two say epistles. epistles. And then it has Revelation. Revelation. Okay, put your hand on your heart. See, I cannot forget how the New Testament is. The, New Testament. the, Gospels, the Gospels, history, history epistles, epistles, and Revelation. Revelation. And so when we know where we're going, it helps, doesn't it? Yeah. But the Gospels, why four Gospels? And when I study Ezekiel, I see something that's really unusual. I see a four-faced creature. And George, when I was 26 years old, I heard William Branham. I was told I could never have a baby. And we were in Dallas at a Voice of Healing meeting, and William Branham called me out and had me come on the platform. Now there were around 5,000 people, I'm scared out of my wits. And something really strange happened to me. And this is a kind of Holy Ghost thing because we are crazy Holy Spirit people. Yes, Amen? Yes, and so he's standing about this far from me as the edge of the platform, and there's like a wheel within a wheel going around. I didn't know what it was. And I could hear it. It would go, shh. I could hear it. I thought, that is the presence of God. If I would step in that, I would die. I was so frightened. And you never told William Brown what was wrong with you. He told you. So he said, uh, you're not from here. You're from a wooded area. You're from a mountainous area. You can't have a baby. Go home and have your baby. And the wow. wheel within a wheel went into my feet wow. and came into my body. Now, I never forgot that. So I thought in nine months, I'll have a baby. But I didn't. I didn't have a baby till 10 years later. But the wheel within the wheel was so interesting to me that the presence of God. And then... When I got pregnant, you know, I went to a doctor and he examined me and he said, uh, you're not pregnant. He said, it's impossible. You're going through the change. So I went home. I had some changes. <laughs> <laughs> then I had Sarah. And so I had to go back to the first doctor who said I wasn't pregnant for insurance. How are you? I said, oh, I just had a baby. Oh. You adopted? I said, no, I had a baby. He said, that's impossible. I said, I did anyway. <laughs> oh, we live in the impossible! Amen! Yeah. Now, if you would like to have a child and you're married, <laughs> I'd like for you to stand up because I'd like to believe with you. I believe God wants us to have wonderful children. That's good. Just stand up and then you can stand for someone else. That's good. Now, I want you to be my healing team. So extend your hand towards someone who's standing and pray with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm calling forth babies, healthy babies in this church, strong marriages. Thank you, Father, that tonight you are doing miracles in this place. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Spirit work together.
together. But Christ in us, the Gospels show us who Jesus is. Because in Ezekiel, it has a four-faced creature. It has a face of a man. It has a face of a lion. It has the face of an ox. And it has a face of an eagle. And so it always pictures Luke as a man. So this is the first one I want you to see is Luke. Say Luke, Luke. is a man. Is a man. Now, in each of these Gospels, we see who Jesus is in them, but also we see who he is in us. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. Now, if you go to Matthew, he's always pictured as a lion. Would you say, Gert? Gert. You're a good lion. <laughs> and so, then if we go to Mark, it's, and Mark is a very short gospel. It's just 16 chapters, very pithy, a lot of immediately, a lot of casting out of demons. And this is pictured as an ox. And so we see an ox as a sacrificial animal, is a servant. But then John, if you'd wave your arms, is an eagle. Yes. And so John is just totally different, you know, from the other gospels. He, he just takes off in a different way. But these four faces show who Jesus is in you Amen. and who Jesus is in me. Amen. 